This is best friend of the show, Monica Cabina, artist and colorist on Batman The Adventures Continue. And you're listening to the DCAU Review, hosted by Cal and Liam, streaming at DCAUReview.com and on your favorite podcast app. Welcome, everyone, to another bonus episode of the DCAU Review. I am Liam, and with me, as he always is, is Cal. And Cal, we are here with a... What we are always here with at the beginning of each month, at least while this comic is going on. And that is, of course, another review and another uh, round of our patented baseless speculation on what the next issue will be like. That's right, folks. We're back with another issue of Justice League Infinity to talk about. And boy, we got a doozy this week, Cal, with the mirror cracked part four. I mean, quite quite frankly, when we introduce the episodes, people have already pressed the play button and likely read the title. So I don't know why we introduce it every week with what we're doing. But just in case people are blindly <laughs> pressing play, I guess. I don't know. But yes, we are reviewing, as the title of the episode suggests for this week's bonus episode, one of three episodes we've released this week, by the way or going to release, depending on when this one is released. And (laughs) uh, that being the review of Justice League Infinity, 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 issue number four, The Mirror Cracked Part Four, which, as our friends at Watchtower Database pointed out in their review video uh, that they're doing, which, cheap free plug for them, if you guys haven't checked out their videos, they're quite entertaining. So go over and, and check those out on their channel. We also are a part of their Pod Tower channel. So while you're there, subscribe to the Pod Tower too, uh, where you may be very well listening to this episode, actually. But anyway, uh, it was originally the Cracked Mirror for parts one and two, and then they flip flopped it, and now it's the Mirror Cracked for parts three and four. So I don't know. I don't know where we are, but we're going to talk about this comic <laughs> book that was released this week. So uh, I'm ready to jump into that with you, Liam. That's right. And uh, as we have been doing for these Justice League issues, we uh, rather than sort of break it down page by page, because uh, we'd quite frankly be here for much longer than either of us or you, the listener, would probably want to be if we tried to do it that way. We're just going to kind of look at the the major story beats and, and sort of where our characters were and and where they uh, where they are by the end of the issue. So we'll start with the uh, we have a little bit of a prologue as we. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Before we get into this, I think we need to talk about the cover. Oh, we well, we talked about last week, but or last time, last episode. But yeah, so like minutes after we finished recording the previous uh, bonus episode, which ended as, as we mentioned, the issue ends with uh, Diana being transported to this other seemingly cold, dead world and finding dark side in the cave with the tagline for the next issue being called a dark side, my love. <laughs> Uh, we were speculating over different alternate universes in which there have previously been seen uh, potential romances between Darkseid and Wonder Woman and, and what this could possibly mean. But seriously, like less than 10 minutes after we stopped, we pressed the stop button on recording that episode, uh, we got the the look at the cover for this issue that, of course, being drawn by James Tucker himself, of course, one of the co-writers of this book and of course was a producer on justice league and justice league unlimited uh back in the day uh it is in fact of uh dark side and wonder woman in a uh in a romantic embrace as it were sharing a kiss uh, as uh, the sort of a, a lot of a lot of curb kirby crackling going on behind them but uh yeah so with that image came quite a bit of uh confusion and and people i think especially people who maybe weren't reading the series we're very, uh, we're very uh, confused and perhaps upset by that. Wonder uh, Woman herself, Susan Eisenberg, tweeted <laughs> out. she was not happy about this. Yes, she, uh, she com- I think, believe she also commented on our uh, our Instagram post with this cover, and it's, uh, which I, I believe we captioned, uh, "We have some questions," and then she. <laughs> She commented that uh, we were not the only one. <laughs> but uh, J.M. DeMatteis and, and James Tucker both, uh, I saw, reached, reached out to her and to us, the fans, and said, hey, just, you know, uh, read the issue first. We think uh, people will uh, will understand where we're coming from and and what's going on. And, and that is sort of a, as, as we open the issue, we get a, yet another prologue, which I believe we did not have last issue of uh, Amazo sort of continuing to float through space and 
we see again this the sh shards of this uh, this mirror that was uh, sort of keeping the multiverses apart, and and he reaches out to touch one, and as we see him reaching out for one, we see another shard with, in fact, a shocked Wonder Woman's face, and we do find out that this is this is the Wonder Woman, the CAU Wonder Woman, and we return back to where uh, we left her, which is again in this cave with uh, with a dark side who is. Uh, who is quite calm and quite uh, reserved in his uh, his introduction to her, and of course Wonder Woman sees him and immediately, uh, as one would expect, based on what we've seen Darkseid do in uh, in in various uh, episodes of Justice League and Justice League Unlimited, as well as Superman, she immediately sort of assumes that he must be behind all of this uh, this turmoil and and multiversal shenanigans that have been going on and she begins to sort of uh, really give him quite a righteous beating but uh, quickly realizes that he is not fighting back and uh, when she asks him why uh, he begins to explain that uh, well this this version of dark side uh, is uh, is not quite the fighter that uh, that other at least compared to the dark side we know at least not anymore as uh, he's he more of a lover that's right uh, specifically a lover of his universe's version of uh, of Wonder Woman so we we begin to get the the dark side origin as we find out yes at some point he was your prototypical dark side that you would expect uh, we see and we'll certainly get into that more in, in art and visuals as we see a flashback to him fighting the Justice League and then uh, eventually after uh, being convinced by Wonder Woman to, uh, to sort of forego that that path. It's kind of a, I guess it's the, uh, and we'll get to this, I think, again, a little bit more in visuals. It's very much a, uh, there's something there that wasn't there before, Beauty and the Beast montage. <laughs> if you know that song, it's the song where Belle and the Beast fall in love in Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> and it's like, it's just like, it's like her, they, there's, it's like a montage of like, they're playing chess and they're like reading together. And, and there's sort of this overarching uh, dark side monologue with talking about how she taught him you know, different philosophies and that, uh, you know, that, that, that uh, taught him to sort of be an ambassador to, to earth and to other planets. And that, uh, you know, war was not the answer to his, uh, to his, uh, to what he wanted. And, and from that, uh, from her sort of teaching him this new way of life uh, began to blossom a romance and they do in fact fall in love. But uh, dark side, there's a little bit of, uh, of, of dark side, the old dark side, I guess, still in him. And that sort of leads to the, the downfall of not just his relationship with Diana, but unfortunately, uh, the death of his entire universe. Yeah, he's always after that rascally rabbit. No, he's always <laughs> after that rascally life equation or anti-life equation rather. And uh, he uh, couldn't, couldn't keep himself from it for long or forever, I guess. So at some point he uh, continued to seek the anti-life equation. It's revealed. And he, <clears throat> unfortunately in this pursuit, uh, the anti-life equation, uh, as it continued to wreak havoc across the universe, uh, I think it mentions there's only one thing that it wants and it's, that is death. So in that case, if it's if it <laughs> endless, infinite death, actually, is what he says. So uh, for it to continue to to feed itself, it wreaks havoc across the, the galaxy and then eventually comes back home to meet Darkseid, which, of course, Darkseid can no longer control the monster at this point, And it tortures him and takes from him his only love, Diana, from this universe anyway, which explains why. Uh, a few issues back when, or last issue, when Diana and uh, kind of swapped places with this versions or this Earth's Diana uh, in her stead on our, in our universe in DCAU uh, proper Earth One. I don't know what Earth that is, but the bones, the bones of Diana appeared mm -hmm. there, and that's because she she was killed uh, by the anti life equation. So we sort of get this tragic. Uh, moment and and dark side again kind of regaling her with this tale and explaining to her just why 
why he loved her. And then he, this dark side tries to strike a deal with, uh, with our Diana, with our wonder woman saying that he believes that there's an anti-life equation, that there must be the opposite. There must be a life equation and that Diana being there must be the key to that life equation. And wonder woman, while she was entertained and perhaps initially drawn uh, in with uh, some, some compassion for this dark side, once he places his hand on her shoulder, uh, uh, he crossed a line there and she she greets him with a, a stern five finger reminder that, uh, yeah, don't touch, please. And storms out uh, from from this cave that she had been hiding in with him. And uh, that's where we kind of almost sort of get confirmation what I speculated on last week or last episode uh, during last issue, which is perhaps this was sort of a hellish landscape where that she had been transported to. There was this mention of cold and darkness and uh, I think even she she even mentioned some something dark and 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 uh, mysterious kind of lurking over the area where she had been transported to. So uh, we actually get an appearance of who appears to be the god or the lord of the underworld, and that being. Hades making an appearance uh, or a reappearance as we had actually seen him previously in the Justice League Unlimited episode. Uh, the balance uh, was that his only appearance? Uh, also in Paradise Lost, back that's right, in the original Justice League run. But uh, yeah, this one actually does feature a brief flat. This uh, uh, page actually has a brief flashback to that episode, The Balance, where uh, where Hades implies that uh, that as is uh, Diana's original comic book origin that they sort of kept for the show, or at least allude to in the show that uh, she wasn't uh, a naturally born child. And that instead uh, uh, Hippolyta had prayed to the goddess Athena and sculpted a baby out of clay. And then Athena sort of breathed life into her. Um, Hades makes an assertion that actually uh, that's not entirely true. And that, and that uh, he and Hippolyta, sculpted diana together and that kind of uh it's sort of in the episode sort of shrugged off as as perhaps just another deception but uh here it's sort of it seems that 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 assertion has weighed on diana and it sort of begins to bring in a little bit of self-doubt to herself as she wonders what if she's not just a uh what if what if that's true and what if there is a little bit more uh evil in her in her dna uh or whatever the themiscarian <laughs> half god amazon equivalent of dna is uh, uh if there's if there's a little bit of of evil of, of demon in in her as well and that's sort of manifested by as it appears that hades appear uh has has shown up to uh to remind her of that and to uh to remind her of her 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 potential uh hellish upbringing but uh, as the fight continues we sort of slowly begin to realize that that's not the actual Hades, but is instead the anti-life equation taking sort of uh, Diana's greatest fear, the form of Diana's greatest fear. And it seems that all hope is lost and that our Wonder Woman may in fact uh, befall the same fate that uh, had had befallen the previous Wonder Woman, uh, the Wonder Woman from this, uh, this original universe. But uh, thankfully dark side in a, in a very heroic moment, uh, fights off the anti-life equation using those omega beams and there's a very big dramatic fight that again we shall talk about quite a bit more in visuals but uh, then as it seems he's sort of willing to sacrifice himself uh to uh to allow this version of diana to live she then sort of springs into action and they're able to sort of fight off the anti-life equation together however dark side is a little bit too too injured and and lets her know that it's it's really too late for him, but that perhaps she can uh, she can continue on and find this uh, this this answer to the anti life equation, a a literal life equation that could potentially bring all of these destroyed universes back. And as she's sort of beginning to grieve for this this man that uh, she, you know she only had ever seen as a monster, only ever thought of as a monster. Her, uh, her grief is interrupted as she is accosted by the by Superman, two Supermen, in fact, and the rest of uh, Earth D's Justice League as they are uniting and, and let and our Superman lets her know that uh, that 
he, along with this Justice Alliance, need Diana's help to save the multiverse. Uh, so that's sort of where our issue ends. Really, we, we don't get as much jumping around as we get in previous issues. There are only other sort of subplot to the issue is we do have a couple of pages that are focused on the uh, the Justice League that was in the spiffy new Javelin, sort of continuing to try to uh, go through the multiverse as they're sort of getting knocked around. And and Jean is, is still very much struggling with uh, trying to to sort of guide the ship and, and sort of, he sort of hooked his brain into the AI of the ship. And he feels like he's being overwhelmed, but uh, Batman is sort of able to, to get through to him and, and tell him that uh, has, has a pretty great pep talk to him and, and sort of keeps him back on track. And, and that's able to uh, get them back towards it. And they actually do. That is sort of the reveal is our heroes do learn as they see a glimpse on the computer of a Mezo. And so, our heroes in the javelin kind of have a destination as we begin to see the parts uh, all sort of folding back into together here as, as Diana has met up with Superman and then some of the other uh, alternate Earth Justice Alliance characters. And then our, our main Justice Leaguers seem to have a lead on, on Amazo. So that, uh, that sets up a pretty interesting and exciting issue five. Yeah, you kind of kind of laid it out there for you. And I, I think so. This was the first issue uh, for me, at least from this. And we're only four issues in here. So it's, it's not like we have a lot to go off of. But this is the first issue. While I enjoyed it, felt a little bit derivative of some prior material. And I think that's one of, as far as in the DCAU fan community, the more visible ones, at least to me, I think that the, the thing that's been applauded and lauded for this series has been its originality. Um, yes, mm-hmm. your multiverses are the hottest thing in comic property, even beyond comic books. Now, everything has a multiverse starting off now. So, you know, that's you could argue that that's not super original. But for the DCAU, this is the first sort of exploration of this multiverse type um, or full exploration exploration of a, of a multiverse type um, fleshing out, so to speak. So but for me, this felt a little bit derivative of hereafter. Uh, which we did have have covered in uh, the archives at DCAUreview.com. If you're interested in hearing our review of that, that episode, just sort of in a synopsis, written by the late, great Dwayne McDuffie, also pro- co-produced uh, not only by Dwayne McDuffie, but also uh, shockingly or not shockingly, Mr. James Tucker, who also worked on writing this episode. Uh, but uh, in that episode, Superman is launched into a different uh, alternate universe or actually into the future. Uh, and in that future, uh, because he passes away at that time, Vandal Savage has taken over and uh, he and Vandal Savage go on some adventures. But the whole thing is, is that Superman in that episode, I guess, has to team up with Vandal Savage to to stay alive. And then Vandal Savage sends him back to prevent him from taking over. And this, it sort of makes Dark Side you know, dark side sort of regaling Wonder Woman with these tales. Yes, it's not our dark side. Uh, it's an alternate universe's dark side, but it gave me some of those similar vibes. So, you know, you have the hero and it's a villain, but it's not the villain. You know, he has to, she has to work with the villain in a way. They team up mm-hmm. to defeat this other thing that they have, you know, that's attempting to kill them. Um, and ultimately there's a sacrifice made by the, by the villainous person in favor of the hero. Uh, and then the hero sort of goes back to their own time at, at the, the culmination of the episode, or in this case, the issue. So it felt a little bit sort of like poetry. It rhymes, I guess, a little bit with this. <laughs> having a different having a different character do it is is good. I it, there were some some things that I thought bringing in you know the her greatest fear you know Hades as this anti life equation as opposed to her fighting a giant green cloud uh, was was much appreciated. Green Lantern. Uh, uh, the Green Lantern movie uh, writers <laughs> could have taken some points from this. Uh, from this, uh, go back and tell, go back in time and tell Jeff Johns not to make Sinestro a giant yellow cloud. Uh, and uh, if 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 we had a time machine, but yeah. Uh, so this wasn't my favorite issue. I'd say there are, you know, it, it feels like we're this was sort of a uh, a pit stop. We had to kind of 
spied some time to figure out how we were going to get the rest of the justice league. They're just kind of meandering to, to Amazo. We're really not sure ultimately. And it's funny. We talked about this before we went on the air that, you know, it, for you, for your perspective, it seemed like this was the reveal that the anti-life equation was sort of the big baddie behind everything here or could be. And, but for mm-hmm. me, I thought it was more, we're still left ambiguous that the anti-life you know, anti-life equation is more sequestered to this universe alone. It's like this universe is anti-life equation. So even in that, there's sort of this ambiguous thing, like, is the anti-life equation going to pop up again? Was It wasn't really soundly defeated by Diana it sort of, and, and dark side, it sort of just scurries away. So we don't really know there's this sort of cloud hanging over who is it that's quote unquote reaching out to a mezzo. We get a couple of pa- you know, panels saying that. So we're not really sure what, what the reveal is, is going to be. Is it going to be another dark? Is it going to be another dark side? Our dark side? Is it going to be Lex Luthor? Is it going to be another universe's Amazo? I, I, I don't know. It's hard, hard to pinpoint, but this felt like a little bit of treading water for this and a little bit of taking some elements from stories that while very good stories had kind of previously come in this, in this form, in this material, at least. Yeah, and I and I will just make a mention of that. Um, there there was uh, someone who had reached out to uh, J.M. DeMatteis on on Twitter this week and mentioned that oh, I, I loved the reveal of the big bad for the series, uh, implying uh, although avoiding the spoiler that it would be the anti life equation. And and J.M. DeMatteis didn't confirm or deny that, and simply said we're not done revealing things yet. So perhaps there is still a, an even bigger bad uh, to play and and the anti-life equation could just be a part of that or we could never never see the anti-life equation again perhaps every universe uh like in marvel how every universe has their own infinity stones maybe every universe has its own anti-life equation and this was just sort of the villain of the piece in a way to sort of do a an interesting character study for for diana uh, that's that's where we get into our our patented baseless speculation, and then we just sort of have to uh, to wait and see where where it'll go from here. But yeah, it does look like we sort of are getting the pieces together there as uh, as our our main leaguers and the javelin are finally aware that Amazo is is somehow at the center of this crazy uh, you know multi- multiversal uh, craziness that's been going on, and so they're they're sort of on the hunt for for Amazo. Whereas, uh, you know, Wonder Woman has met up with Superman and some of the other uh, other multiverse heroes, and they're sort of on a quest as well. And it seems that Superman uh, has some knowledge about what what they need to do to uh, to save the entire multiverse. So I assume we'll get a little bit more reveal and a little bit more exposition as to how uh, he found that out, perhaps next issue. I think we've already seen the cover for that issue, and it. It has our Superman flying alongside uh, the uh, the other Superman, and uh, as well as the uh, the alternate Freedom Fighters that we've seen in previous issues. So um, I assume we'll get a little bit more of a focus back on Superman, perhaps for that issue, and perhaps how he was able to uh, trans. Perhaps we'll find out how he was able to transport between Earths and and things like that. So I, I assume next issue is when we start getting some big, big reveals, but yeah, I do wonder if, uh, if, if this anti-life equation that was sort of revealed here, that not only is the, is it this unstoppable force, but it also has this ability to, uh, you know, sort of take, take the form of your greatest fears or your greatest adversaries. Uh, I do wonder if that's going to come back as if not the villain of the piece, perhaps a, you know, a pawn of whoever are, our, our tippy top big bad is indeed lots of uh lots of speculation to be had here i it feels like we're coming as we said uh and it's i mean it does take rocket scientists to to guess it but having the the culmination be all of all all of these heroes uh with superman as well as our earth's justice league and now uh, Diana joining uh, back with Superman and and these alternate Earth uh, Justice League and Freedom Fighters sort of all culminating to take on Amazo. Um, well, I guess we don't know that. We don't know that, that that Superman has figured that out. So perhaps there is another bad guy uh, or, uh, you know, another villain lurking in the shadows. Uh, if you had to if you had to guess, is it going to be somebody that we know? I, I feel like Lex Luthor or 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 Darkseid would almost be a little bit of a letdown because that that would be kind of expected like all right who's who's it going to be or maybe 
maybe a brainiac of, or something could be behind all of it. Uh, brainiac seems like the only other other person that might be a lar- like on a large enough scale to potentially affect something like this. But we also don't know what happened to Brainiac once Lex Luthor uh, joined the source wall. Right. So it's hard, right. Hard. Yeah. We, so we don't, we still don't really know if there was still Brainiac, if there was ever really truly Brainiac left in the universe post uh, the events of divided, we fall and, and, and twilight, whether or not uh, there was actually ba- Brainiac to be recovered or if, or if that was all sort of just a, uh, side side way to bring dark side back into the world so um i i that would be interesting if it turned out that the you know the main dcau brainiac had sort of somehow ascended to being like a, a multiversal brainiac who wants to if he's sort of still doing his his shtick from from superman the animated series where he's destroying worlds and and collecting their knowledge but perhaps doing that on a multiversal scale that could that would certainly be a really interesting twist. And if it was the idea of it was, it was the brainiac we've known for all these years and been watching and reading and, and all of these various shows and comics, but had just ascended to this next level of, of being, that would be really interesting. Uh, and then my other thought is it could be like, uh, you know, the more, some of the more recent comic books um, have done like the, the dark Knights metal thing where we introduced just like, uh, you know, the most recent uh, version of that had like a, an evil Dr. Manhattan mixed with Batman. So it, if it turned out to just be like an evil multiversal equivalent of a Mezo, I feel like maybe that would be a letdown to people because it's not a returning character. But I could see that also being the case if because we still don't really know the the true scope of what a Mezo can do. So perhaps uh, you know, a more evolved and evil version of Amazo from some sort of parallel universe could also be at hand. There's, that's, that's probably the most out there speculation I'll, I'll, I'll make on it, that it could be a, you know, a, a dark multiverse version of, of Amazo or, or something like that. That's probably the, the least likely of these theories uh, that we've talked about or thrown out so far, but that's one that's kind of been bouncing around in the back of my mind. So yeah, I, I guess that's that's the biggest the biggest thing is is there a, a master pup is there a is there a puppet master is it just this sort of overwhelming force of this anti life equation There's a, there's still some some questions to be answered as we we head into the last couple of issues here. Sure is uh, looking forward to seeing what's next. Regardless though, because this is this remains be uh, remains. Uh, as a very fun time. And certainly, uh, I guess we can start talking about the visuals, you know, at, between <clears throat> between Ethan Beaver's uh, pencils and inks and then and Nick Filardi's colors. Uh, it's it's <laughs> visually it's it's a lot of fun. It's a lot. Of, it's a it's a smorgasbord for the eyes. And this week, you know, we have a couple different locations that we see. We see uh, you know, we're still on this desolate, hellish earth with dark side. And so we are in this well, cave. Not earth, actually. It's it's apocalypse. As we, as right. We that's out. true. It, it, up, this hellish cold apocalypse. Actually, it's interesting. Mm-hmm. This cave is really the only place where uh, we get sort of the red hue that we're norm that we're used to from apocalypse. And uh, the rest of the uh, the rest of the, the world is this cold, desolate blue shade and the characters in those scenes tend to have a almost like a dark blue hue to them um, which kind of gives it that cold feel across the uh once they're outside of that cave and um we get some more splash pages which of course i'm a big fan of we get a, a nice big splash page of dark side battling that earth's uh justice league and it's interesting because yes. that earth's justice league has more of a, a golden age feel, I guess, to it. Mm-hmm. Um, Wonder Woman is wearing uh, sort of classic high heels with these shin things, shin coverings, I guess. Those garters? What are those? Uh, someone tweet us and let us know what type of uh, fashion uh, uh, fashion <laughs> accessory that is that Wonder Woman is spotting there. Um, but we also see, I, I guess it's somewhat reminiscent of the New Frontier Earth because we get a, a small 
small shot of John Jones and he's got uh, he's got ears. Martian Manhunter has <laughs> ears in here. We see what looks like it could be the hand of uh, of Aquaman in his classic orange and, and green. We see the flash uh, sort of laying laying there as well as the atom. We get a Green Lantern in the background, but it's not uh, it's not John Stewart. It's not Kyle Rayner. This appears to be Hal Jordan, perhaps uh, complete with white boots. Mm -hmm. so that's not a look that we're typically used to seeing. And then uh, that Earth Superman as well, looking a little bit more like classic Superman, the animated series Superman, I'd say. Battling uh, Steppenwolf. Battling Steppenwolf, right? Yep, we get get a good shot of that. And then uh, we flash, we, we have some great looks on Apocalypse pre-anti-life equation desolation uh, as we, you know, that red hue, the Kirby crackle, some great shots of dark mm -hmm. sides sort of stoically interacting with wonder woman who happens to be wearing uh, a, a garb that we haven't seen her. I don't think wear in, uh, in the DCAU with the dress and the, the white dress and the headdress that uh, where did that originally make its, make its uh, uh, first appearance. Was that, is that an Alex? That's not an Alex Ross design. Is it? Uh, I, I'm trying to think of there's It's definitely appeared in a lot of different stuff. I think it is in kingdom come it's used in, I think, uh gosh I, well it's actually it is used in um in hereafter she, that's okay. kind of the garb she wears in the in the funeral oh you're right yeah good, um, good call but i'm yeah i'm not sure if this originated in kingdom come or if it uh if it has its origins in in kind of earlier maybe like the george perez drawn era oh, of yeah, wonder woman be. perhaps or, or phil Jimenez, perhaps so I, uh, I'll have to do some research on that. We'll, we'll try to get an answer for you by next month. But uh, yeah, that's definitely yeah. An, an Alex Ross homage, though, in the form of the statue that lives there of the fallen Diana. She's complete in her in her uh, most recently seen in Wonder Woman 1984 uh, metal metal armor with the eagle helmet and the uh, the metal wings attached. Mm -hmm. uh, so we get a good good shot of that. But uh, some some fun visuals here. I'm not a fan of there's the anti life equation being green and yellow yellowish green did give me a, a, that's why I mentioned it before some parallax flashbacks. <laughs> um, the Kirby crackle and it does break it up a little bit and, and make it feel a little bit more like home, but it it feels a little less uh, less threatening when you see something sort of just uh, exhibited as energy and the the green energy. Uh, it, other than a couple of the, the, the panels that show sort of the uh, it's striking the, the surface of apocalypse where it really mm -hmm. kind of, there's kind of a shade that uh, goes from green to yellow up and down. I thought that kind of shows the impact it's making, but it feels a little less threatening than, I don't know, it, but I don't know how you make an equation into something threatening. So. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a fair point. I, I, I'm, I know this, I believe it's in Final Crisis, uh, which is, of all the crisis books, probably the one I've uh, read the least. I think I read that one time. I think that book involves uh, Darkseid discovering the anti-life equation, but I don't think they really visualize it in that way. It's more like a, it's like a mind control device in that, in that, uh, in that comic, if memory serves. I could be totally wrong, because again, I uh, read that once in 2009 and never read it again but uh yeah I, I i don't i don't know exactly how else you would but yeah there is something there's a little bit of that it's a little bit of uh galactus in the fantastic four sequel yeah uh, from the from the <laughs> mid-2000s where he was just a big cloud oh yeah um, that was a cloud too oh. yeah so it's, it's just it's just never a good idea to make your your big bad a, a big cloud <laughs> I think that's a fair, uh, I think that's a fair assessment here, but yes, there are some, some quite stunning visuals, I think, especially in the, uh, in the fight scenes we get uh, from that, that sort of brief scuffle that, uh, that Diana and Darkseid have at the start in the cave to when uh, Diana is sort of contending with this anti-life equation that's taken the form of, uh, of Hades and she's sort of uh, getting overwhelmed by it. And there's kind of this great three panels shot where, where the Hades who's sort of taken the more uh, devilish form that we see at the end of uh, Paradise Lost, I believe, uh, sort of grabs her around the throat and is sort of holding her. And then her body begins to sort of wilt and wither. And she is, you know, quite literally near uh, about to sort of uh, be left a husk. And uh, that's when, when Darkseid makes sort of his big heroic turn and, 
just comes into frame with this giant punch and then uh, unleashes the Omega beams. And we kind of see dark side's power going against the power of the, uh, of the anti-life equation. I think that's a really, there's a, there's a really stunning panel that you, uh, you uh, messaged me about kind of as soon as we had both read the issue earlier of, of dark side, just unleashing those Omega beams against, against this, uh, Hades construct and then in the next page as he's sort of trying to fight it off we see um the reds of his uh his uh of the omega beams coming out of his eyes mixing with the green black and yellow of the of the anti-life equation as he's being attacked and then I think speaking of the the Wonder Woman live action films this is definitely to my knowledge the first time we've seen uh, at least this DCAU Wonder Woman use the old Gal Gadot uh, bracelet clap. Yeah, that was uh, you pointed that out, and somebody else uh, I think interacted with us on social media this week saying that as well. But uh, yeah, it was pretty cool to see that brought in here. A, uh, she kind of clears the anti life equation out of out of the area with that uh, with that uh, beautifully lettered katang uh, as. Right. <laughs> sort of splashing across the page but yeah that whole that whole fight between uh between well hades slash the anti-life equation and and uh and wonder woman and then then ultimately dark side is is drawn really well and i think bringing in the color when they needed to as as i said it's you know it's across this apocalyptic landscape here of, of dark blue for the majority of it and a cold haze over everything and then when dark side finally breaks through with the omega beams it really brightens things and then you you know the you start to see the anti-life equation come in and it really brightens things up but then as the anti-life equation leaves it sort of returns to that gray blue color uh, over everything as dark side ultimately dies in that moment and it's a very touching moment because, uh, you know, Diana does does mourn uh, for for a moment, and again, not um, not for a monster, she says, but for for a man. So, sort of recognizing his his efforts to sacrifice himself in order to to save her. There's a really great panel that wraps up that uh, Dark Side is sort of laying up against this stone, lifeless, and there's this back shadow across Wonder Woman with her head down. And um, you know, just in that moment is when when the rest of the Justice League arrives. So there's sort of this almost this swirling that's happening around her that you can mm-hmm. kind of st- see start in that panel and then continues in the next as the as Superman and the other uh, the other world's justice league appears uh, to her. So uh, yeah, there's uh, shocking, not shocking. Uh, one, one last thing I'll say is I thought it was interesting on that, that splash panel that they show as he's as dark side is regaling the tale of the anti-life equation, mm-hmm. uh, destroying apocalypse. Um, the way that they broke up those pages, the panels sort of have this apocalyptic uh, technology sort of breaking the panels yes. up. Uh, which I thought was really unique. Like you usually, you kind of just have square panels or you have, you know, you, you have these divide, uh, d- dividers that are broken up into just regular borders, but the borders for each of those panels have this really intricate Kirby-esque apocalyptic, you know, technology that are, sort of breaks up the panels and makes it for a really unique sequence. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I had, I had forgotten to mention it. But yeah, I, I thought the panel layout in this is very interesting because yes, when, when Darkseid is sort of doing the flashback, as you mentioned, there's sort of these jagged, uh, sort of the, the panels are all very jagged and kind of misshapen and have this, these like silver, silver, so they're all sort of silver with these red uh, red dots, this very, again, very Kirby-esque uh, designs for the targets and even um the panel layout when we see the justice league sort of zipping through the multiverse and they're kind of lost uh, as 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 the the universe seems to be swallowing them up uh the panels are kind of they're it almost looks like they're coming off the page like you see this real crooked of, yeah. yeah they're really crooked and sort of a you know it's almost look like they're raising up and you see sort of just the blank whiteness behind them as as uh, you know, it's Batman and Vixen and Hawk Girl and, and Green Lantern sort of trying to steady themselves, and that panel sort of crooked, and then you know these the sort of subsequent three panels of of Green Lantern and Hawk Girl, and then two of of Jean are, are sort of the same thing, are sort of sort of rising up and sort of angled in a very off kilter way to sort of 
guarantee to that. And then as Batman, it kind of makes his appeal to Jean, which again, I, I really do like that scene as, as he feels like he's getting lost and, and Batman sort of makes this appeal to him that he's, that he is strong enough that he's stronger than anyone Batman knows. And, you know, he talks about how he, he lost everything. He lost his family, his entire world, but he, you know, he, he still kept fighting and found the will to survive and that he can do this too. And that, uh, you know, and, and as Jean sort of regains his motivation and begins to write the ship, the, the panels themselves begin to sort of settle back in, you know, the next couple are still a little bit crooked. And then the, the last two there of, of Shaira and John piloting the ship and as they see Amazo and then the final shot of the ship sort of zooming off into this next portal that they're going through sort of begin to get their, their, the more normal panel shape back to it. So I thought that was a really clever way of showing like the, as they were getting kind of lost and the, the wheels were coming off, so to speak, the, the panels literally change shape and sort of change angle. And then once, uh, once Jean is able to sort of regain control, the, the sort of normal shape returns. I thought that was a really clever way to sort of just give in, in a comic that is a static image of giving that little extra, to show you know to show off how how they're how they're in trouble and how you know reality itself is beginning to unravel i thought that was a really clever way to kind of illustrate that and and mixing that in with the great you know the great art in and of itself and the uh and the great colors from nick filardi yeah i think that's uh that's a really fun way to do that so yeah not not surprisingly perhaps once again we have a uh, quite a bit of uh praise for the the art team of uh, mr beavers and mr filardi yeah, absolutely. I think even uh, last thing I'll say about the visuals and, th and then we'll wrap things up, but the, the, in that sequence, which is a very small part of this issue, but the sequence back to the javelin, uh, there's one panel as John is sort of losing control uh, that they, they highlight in the lower right hand corner of the page that he's sort of screaming and they shaded him all in red and the accompanying scream. You can, you can hear Carl Lumbly delivering the, the famous Martian Martian man hunter cry, like in that moment, like the Jean feeling of pain as he's, you know, experiencing this as his mm -hmm. mind is sort of melded with the machine. And then, the very next sequence is this pep talk that Batman delivers where, you know, he, he's trying to get Jean to snap out of it. And right accompanied with that, he's sort of standing in front of Jean and doing everything to sort of shake him by the lapels and the accompanying images with that drawn so beautifully and, and, and inked so beautifully and colored so beautifully along with the dialogue uh, that was written for this, you know, you can hear Kevin Conroy de delivering this pep talk to John, you know, telling him uh, that he can do this. He can regain control of this. It, I thought all of that, it was just sort of like the perfect marriage of why this feels so authentically DCAU, like uh, all of that together worked, worked really well. So I'm, I'm excited to see where the next chapter brings. As I said, it felt a little bit like this was a detour, a little bit of tre treading water, maybe a little bit of, of reusing some of the material that we've, we've had before some plot points that we've had in prior justice league material, but overall, very good, very good issue. And I'm certainly looking forward to seeing now that Diana has been reunited with Superman. We know that Superman is off of his world and has somehow figured out how to travel between universes. What's coming next? What's going to be the big culmination here as our Justice League is headed towards a rendezvous with Amazo? Uh, what is Superman and, and this, this, these other worlds Justice League going to do? And where are they headed next is kind of the speculation I guess we should we should make. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, there's a lot to uh, to unpack there as we continue on. And uh, of course, we look forward to learning and speculating some more next month when we get the next issue of Justice League Infinity number five uh, around this same time in another month here. It's uh, it's we're inching towards the conclusion of this. And uh, we're we're certainly having a, fun, a lot of fun breaking it down, breaking down the plot, thinking about where they could go next. And of course, uh, just being in awe of uh, the great art that's been on display for every issue so far. And uh, as Cal said, I definitely want to hear from you what you thought of this issue, where you think it's going next. Do you have a, a big prediction for the big bad? Do you think it simply is the, uh, the anti-life equation like I perhaps hypothesized? Do you think uh, we'll never see that again? Do you think it will be a character 
that we've seen before? Uh, uh, is it is it going to be Brainiac? Is it going to be Lex? Who could it be? Uh, definitely want to hear that feedback. Tweet us at DCAU Review or comment on our Instagram post, also at DCAU. Think and what you thought of the issue overall, and of course, what you thought of that episode. Uh, number one thing we definitely want to hear from on this and all of our episodes. As uh, as I believe Cal mentioned earlier, we have uh, three episodes going up, or potentially have already gone up this week, including this one uh, with our bonus episode here reviewing. Justice League Infinity. We have another bonus episode, of course, reviewing the Batman The Adventures Continue Season 2 comic book, as that one is also uh, ramping up towards its conclusion. Uh, so a lot to talk about there. And our regular episode, where we reviewed uh, an all-time classic episode of Batman the Animated Series with Harley and Ivy. So this was a big weekend for you boys here at the DCAU Review, and uh, we appreciate everyone sticking with us and uh, letting us know what they think. Absolutely. Looking forward to doing more reviews and excited to see what comes next month. Uh, Cannot wait. Absolutely. So thank you everyone for listening. And until next time, I'm Liam. And I'm Cal. And we'll talk to you soon on the next episode of the DCAU Review. Bye-bye.